table in passing the baton to you. Congratulations. We are going to keep it brief, and that's tough for a guy that did spend a lot of money for many, many years to get up here and talk. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, but there's going to be plenty, plenty of evenings to hear me and the new board and my new vice presidents um, to uh, talk about to talk about uh, the new vision we have for the American Chamber here at Amcham. And you've heard tonight about Beyond Our Borders. And one aspect that you can really uh, count on as far as behind our borders is considered, was that on? Okay. Um, is the incredible support we've had tonight. Um, so first of all, uh, from the diplomatic corps, we are absolutely honored the amount of people and the ambassadors and the consulates that are here. I want to say thank you, not only for having come here to host thank you. our new U.S. ambassador, but the support uh, for the very first time that I've been here at an American Chamber event, and we look forward to hosting you many, many, many more times. Thank you. <laughs> to everyone here, a direct apology from me personally for some of the logistical issues we had. Um, we had two cars, and when I find out who they are, we'll deal with that in another day. Um, but uh, we still don't know who they are. They're still out there. Um, but caused literally in the worst parts of the, the parking issue. And that really put the agenda behind. And uh, I'm sure many of you uh, saw me, but I was down there with my sleeves up and trying to fix the situation. And I paid the price because then they cut my, my speech in half. Um, but also to the public sector that's here. I mean, there's many folks here um, from our honor guests that are at our tables. Uh, they're guests of our sponsors. Um, we've already obviously mentioned uh, Minister Hilton and his wife. Um, we have the opposition uh, leader here, uh, Andrew Holness, and uh, he's actually an inspiration for something I'll briefly speak about uh, at an AMJAM event we did together many, many years ago. And we have uh, also my partner, uh, Edmund Barlett, Member of Parliament. And I want to say, uh, and, and Ed, Ed knows this, uh, my, our other partner, John Spencer, is in Montego Bay holding down the fort uh, with 300 employees and two buildings. And it's our busy season. And he's actually, today, uh, was supposed to be here, but he got ill. And I feel bad because he's the person that nobody knows. And he really is the one person that allows me to go do my own thing. And there's not too many partners in the world that would really support this because let's face it, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and it takes away from my core business. So I want to say thank you to John Spencer. We also have um, our Aldi Shaw, Member of Parliament. Uh, it's an honor for him to be here, uh, for me, an honor for me to have him here. And uh, he's always great to see him. And uh, I love when he comes up and gives you a big hug. It, it, to me, it makes, makes my day when I see him. Thank you, Ollie, for being here. And we have uh, Richard Parman, Member of Parliament, also here tonight. And Senator uh, Duncan, uh, who is also here tonight. And I hope I didn't miss anybody. I know this is Jamaica, and I obviously wasn't even supposed to have this job of protocol tonight. <laughs> but it's my honor to have so many people. Think about it. Uh, the fact that we weren't able up until this point to mention so many people um, is to show you that we've achieved the first step uh, in achieving beyond our borders. And I'm just going to say, when it comes to beyond our borders, it speaks for itself. The American Chamber of Commerce is not about a boys club hanging out with uh, the United States of America. Yes, it is that, but so much more. There are 28 American Chambers of Commerce in this hemisphere alone. And when I go to these events with Becky and some of our other members, the rest of the Am Jams are sitting there with 20, 30 of their top companies. And I'm going to bring that value-added membership to our member base to open up trade once and for all. I also reminds me 
of the very first time I ever came to an Amgen event, because it's identical to tonight. Um, is Barry Benito still here and his wife and Barry back in the back? I want to acknowledge Barry's a very good friend of mine and, and he's, he's right now fighting health and, and, and fighting cancer and I love you Barry if you're out there but he's the very first person um, that introduced me and got me to get out of my apartment to come to the very first official event of Ambassador Bridgewater which was in Montego Bay and that's the very first time that I was able to meet two very special women in my life, Becky Stockhausen and Diana Stewart. And I'd like everyone to give the two of them a round of applause. And when I sat there and listened, and I had already been here three years, and I, didn't, I said, wow, there's this American thing going on here I didn't even know about. And uh, I got to get involved. And, Becky invited me over to Kingston, and all you need to know is now I officially moved to Kingston, even though my business with 300 employees is in Montego Bay. So that's the power of the American Chamber of Commerce. I also want to just talk about our initiative of the silent auction. You're going to hear a lot more about it uh, in a few weeks when we have our, our, our initiative on the service industry, Ahsoka. Uh, we're not going to spend some time tonight, but I'm going to really re-gauge a lot of my speech to that night. But the key two elements of what I was going to say before I introduce our special guest, which has gone way past, and I, I'm going to apologize on that too, is that we need to get the private sector to lead the fight for growth in this country and stop making excuses about all our barriers because there's plenty of examples in this country of companies that have been successful, not just here, but throughout the region. And one day, Minister Hilton, when he first became minister, came to a luncheon for the American Chamber of Commerce, and he had a comment to say he was a little disappointed about how lack of progress in an issue the American, no, not the American Chamber, that the private sector did. And I have to tell you, I was very taken back by that. I was sitting next to him. But in years since then, I've been able to reflect on the fact that we use that as a private enterprise, as a private sector, as a crutch. And we need to just forward our initiative and use the success stories we have, and not just do it here in Jamaica, but bring, bring brand Jamaica and capitalism that's here in Jamaica throughout the entire region and trade back here. And the private sector is going to do that starting tonight with our ambassador, new U.S. ambassador in the American Chamber of Commerce. And lastly, the sign on auction you see tonight is for vocational education scholarships. A lot of people have been asking me what that is. Well, about three years ago, my friend Andrew Holness came to a, a breakfast with the top 50 CEOs in this country, and we launched an educational initiative for vocational education. Since then, we've been sidetracked on many, many times because we involved some of the aspects of the public sector, um, and we know there's been change back and forth, and that's just a part of life everywhere. But we need to drive vocational education forward. Our 14 year olds needs to have a career path that runs parallel with their educational path once and for all to show them that hard work will pay off for them, not just to get an education and move, but to take pride in staying here and building a career and building a nuclear family. And that is going to be what my presidency is going to be defined as one way or the other. And lastly, as I introduce the ambassador, which is a great honor, I just want to talk briefly and say that I want to thank my family that's here tonight. Uh, many of you that are close to me know that I, I don't have children of my own. I, I lost a child that I raised for 12 years uh, right before I moved to Jamaica. Matter of fact, it was a catalyst for me to just start a new life in Jamaica. And when I moved down here, uh, there's so many people in the room that I could say are, are my family. But they embraced me, gave me a new life, a new perspective uh, on life. And a perspective from, obviously, you see here from ministers and ambassadors all the way to my drivers are here tonight. I didn't ask them to drive. I asked them to come here and enjoy the evening to the band and to the members that are all here, the sponsors. Every single sponsor is a friend of mine. But when I came down here and saw that friendship, it's the reason why on our worst days that I forged through and I live a separate life from the love of my life and we try to make it work and we do our best. But I sit here and I look at friends that 
came from Philadelphia. I look at friends that came from San Domingo who flew in for this event, and then I realized that uh, all this was well worth it and that what we do every day. And with that, I want to welcome into our family here in Jamaica, and I want to welcome our, our newest friend, uh, our new ambassador, the Honorable Louis Murray.